Two-thirds of Australia is sparsely settled, the outback. Millions of square kilometres of it, an area as large as Western Europe or two-thirds the size of the USA. Well, you can imagine the problem when somebody gets sick or injured in the outback. One man back in 1912, a Presbyterian minister, John Flynn, had a vision for how he might help those people who needed medical assistance. He said, why don't we set up a bush hospital or nursing home? And so one was established at Udnadatta. It was so successful that nursing homes or bush hospitals were set up throughout the outback. And to supervise all of this, they established the Australian Inland Mission with John Flynn as the boss. Flynn was still not satisfied. He said, I want to be able to offer medical help to people living in the outback beyond the range of the small group of nursing homes. He thought that maybe the idea was to combine aeroplanes with radio. He said, what we really need is a wireless which can send messages and receive them. It needs to be small, easy to operate, and to be able to work without electricity. And so a friend of his, Alfred Traeger, an engineer in Adelaide, invented the famous pedal radio. Now, it's a bit like your bicycle light. You know there's a generator on the front wheel. That spins around, gives electricity to the headlight. Same with this. If I spin that little dynamo inside by means of the lever, I can produce electricity in this torch and make light. Well, this gadget works in a little bit the same way. Traeger's pedal radio had two pedals, and by pedalling here, you turn a dynamo around inside, that produces electricity, which in turn powers the two-way radio. Now, it wasn't a normal radio. You couldn't talk and listen. You had to send more signals. Now, the problem is you had to learn Morse code. Traeger hadn't finished with inventions. He then invented something which was just as remarkable as this. It was the world's first automatic Morse keyboard. Now, it looks like a typewriter. All you need to do here is to tap out the letters of the words you want to send, and it automatically converted those into electrical signals which were sent via radio. Traeger still kept going. He wanted to help Flynn's vision to be realised. So he then came up with this remarkable invention way before its time. It's a tiny miniature transceiver, much bigger than those today, but in its time, people were absolutely amazed at how small it was. So now people in the outback could communicate with the centre and with the doctor by means of this transceiver. The first aeroplane used was a de Havilland Model 50, which carried a doctor, a nurse, and a patient on a stretcher, as well as a pilot. So Flynn had his radio, and he had his aeroplane. In 1928, the flying doctor service began. In that first year of operation, that de Havilland Model 50 flew 32,000 kilometres, and the first flying doctor, Dr. St. Vincent Welsh, treated 225 patients. 25 of whom would have died had it not been for the Flying Doctor Service. Well, the service continued to grow until there were 14 bases around Australia, all of them using equipment such as this to communicate with people in the outback. To remember the man who started it all, the Reverend John Flynn, a memorial church was built in Alice Springs, and this stone was placed over his grave just outside the city. Flynn of the Inland.